All right, sis, give us a jingle. Spotlight session with T.S. Madison. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All with the show, bit. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Spotlight Session with none other than me, T.S. Madison. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know I love bringing you people who might be hidden gems in our community. Tonight, you're going to meet an actress and a model. The lady herself, Miss Toni Bryce. Well, ladies and gentlemen, honey, <laughs> here we are, girl. <laughs> here we are. We had a spotlight session with T.S. Madison, honey, and tonight I have Tony Bryce. Tony Bryce, you know, let's say if somebody out there was watching this program. Okay. And they didn't know who Tony Bryce was. Mm -hmm. What would well, you do? Tell, tell what would you do? Well, I mean, first and foremost, I'm an actress. Mm -hmm. I'm an actress. Um, I mean, I guess we'll get into the details of that. Yeah, we can okay. do all that. So I'm, a, I'm an actress. I've modeled public speaking. Um, I've blogged before early on in my transition. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. Before we go deep. <laughs> before we go deep, honey, like a, like a drill. Not like a drill. Like a drill. So you're a trans woman. I am. All right, all right. So the proper pronouns to use when, when, when it, indulging in a conversation mm -hmm. with you is she hers hers she hers hers now whatever the fuck y'all hoes say on the outside of that we don't give a fuck but in Period. our which respect me in my pay in my face right right you get what i'm saying right all right cool i get it all right so you are a trans woman and mm -hmm. you are an actress and a model mm -hmm. now you know here's the thing and, and I, I love i love playing devil's advocate on my queen's uh supreme court show mm -hmm. but there are a lot of trans models mm -hmm. and actors. What what is what sets you apart? What makes you different? Well, I'm not in terms of modeling. Like I'm not like a um, runway um, commercial advertisement type of model. I'm I've modeled for like a lot of campaigns around Atlanta. Mm. So like Stop HIV ATL. Mm. I'm also model for um, Fulton County Board of Health, and I'm also on their mobile testing van. So if y'all have ever seen those vans in Fulton County. I'm in the green, in the green dress. And then as far as actressing, or actressing, acting, um, I'm, I'm just a girl, like, I, I'm independent. Mm -hmm. I don't have management. I don't have an agent right now. So everything I've done has really been, like, a grassroots effort with me, myself, and me. And the community, I can say that, too, because a lot of times it's community pull, are pushing me toward opportunity mm -hmm. that I may not know about. Mm -hmm. So so here's my thing. What... What are some of the obstacles you have faced as a trans woman mm -hmm. pursuing your your acting career? I think majority of the time, because you know, being I always say being trans, a black woman of trans experience, we have three experiences. I feel like we have the experience of being black, mm -hmm. woman, just being a woman, and then being a trans woman. Uh, before we even move mm -hmm. forward in that, I, I want to you know get in and dissect the term woman. Okay, and and trans woman in this situation because mm -hmm. you know we're living in a in a in an age and time where people are are very offended uh by titles mm -hmm. and they're offended by you know self expression mm -hmm. they're offended by identity right and i'm going to play devil's advocate in this again okay <laughs> a woman watching you mm -hmm. saying you know you don't know anything about the woman experience because you're mm -hmm. not a woman. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Because there are there are some women that will challenge you. Like you're right. you're, 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 you're 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 not a woman. So how do you you know how could you relate the mm -hmm. the, the black woman right. experience to you working? Mm -hmm. what, what what is your well, I feel like when when I look at it, I feel like a lot of times people don't know the difference between gender identity and sexual orientation. Can you please b break it down for us? Right so, now. I always like to say, you know, sexual orientation is, if, if we want to break it down real simple and plain, mm -hmm. sexual orientation is who you go to bed with, mm -hmm. and gender identity is who you go to bed as. Ah! Can you say that again? So sure. The people... <laughs> <laughs> so, sexual orientation is who you go to bed with, and gender identity is who you go to bed as. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. So that's how I like to break it down. So I feel like a lot of times when people are saying that we're not this or we don't have this, they no, are equating don't say it. it. When people say that we're not women. Oh, women. Mm -hmm. Say that we're not women. I feel like they're equating it to saying, to, to what the experiences of being female is. 
Uh, now, I, I was waiting for you to get to this to this part because, you know, I get in a lot of hot water by, by communicating stuff because maybe I have a vulgar way of, of saying it or okay. speaking it. <laughs> but it is what it is. You mm -hmm. know, it comes with the territory. So I'd like to say for you to break down the difference between female mm -hmm. and woman. I've tried, but, okay. you know, sometimes they don't like my approach at it. So mm -hmm. let's hear a different, different approach. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like when it comes to female, female is biological. It's science. Mm -hmm. It's biologically your anatomy, how you're... How Biologic, you're bi biology and genetics. Right. There we go. Biology and genetics. So female says you're, you're born with a uterus and ovaries and you know you can bear children whether you whether your womb is barren or not you're born with that ability, ability to do that right mm -hmm. that is what female is i feel like what being a woman is is completely different that's just how you live your life how you show up in the world how you it, handle your responsibilities please please elaborate deeply on that <laughs> <laughs> just deeply yeah um like how how you present how you express how you express yourself how you your mindset. Um, I feel like just being a woman is, is every like how you live your life, period. It's, I mean, we know that gender is a social construct at the end of the day. So we've created these ideas around what a woman is to do and what a man is to do. So if for us living on the binary. I need to hold your hand. I don't mean to keep interrupting, but it's just a lot going on in the world. We know that. What's a social construct? It's, it's, it's societal that we made it up as a as a society. Woman is a social. Construct. Oh, woman! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woman, man, all of that. Man, and woman yeah. is a social construct. Yes. Female, male, it's genetics and biology. Yes, and that's why I always say too when people say, "Oh, you were born a man. You were born a man." We were not. Correct. We were born male, female, intersex. From that, that transitioned into being a boy, little boys and little girls. Now, whether someone had a manhood or not, as they grew up and developed in life, that's just whenever, at what point they tr decided to transition. Mm -hmm. But that's when I always say, you know, being a cis woman is just identifying with the gender and mm -hmm. sex you were assigned at birth. And being a trans woman is um, not necessarily identifying with that and ident identifying with the opposite gender and um, sex you were identified or assigned with at birth. But at the end of the day, we're both women. It's just how we got to womanhood is just a little different. Oof. Girl, listen, they might eat you up. My comments are off on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and for all the messages, we'll be sending the request. Girl, they might, <laughs> they might light you up about that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's, it's, things are so fragile right now. Mm -hmm. Masculinity is, is, is fragile. Um, uh, uh, women's feelings about being uh, replaced and erased, mm -hmm. and you know that's very fragile. Right. You know, and it's it's a very delicate situation when it comes down to trans women. And this mm -hmm. is why I always make sure when I'm communicating or tr or trying to express myself to women or my women followers and things like that, I try to make sure that I let them know I'm I'm I am a trans woman that identifies as a trans woman. Mm -hmm. Me too. I do not identify as female. Right, right. I don't know the female experience because I'm not a female. Right. I, I, I don't know how many times I have to go back and forth with the whole situation of, ma'am, you don't have to break biology down to me. I understand right. this. But I have to break gender studies down to you. Right. I'm not here to replace any woman because it is impossible. I, I I have. We, I don't want to speak mm -hmm. about this in a, in a in a in a personal in a place because you experience you you as a trans woman do experience some of the same things too. Yeah, we're not here to erase or replace right. women because it is impossible to do that. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for sisters. And man. we were like, and we and we I, at least me mm -hmm. and you I, from talking to you I we can say we're not trying to do that. Mm -mm. Just living in our dreams. Yeah, we're just living. This is who we are. Period. This is who we are. And who we are is, I guess it's 
threads and puts fear. Well, listen, don't you, you start using that word threat, and oh, they go, those girls are gonna t- they're gonna claw your eyes out. <laughs> okay, well, they're gonna claw you out because it makes them feel a type of way. It we'll does. It does because in in because when they when 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 some of them, not all, because yeah. our allies are strong, heavy on some. You're right. Yeah, because we want to use it as a blanket statement. Yeah, heavy some, on some. But our because we have our allies that understand and and, and knowledge and you know part of it they are they are strong. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But uh, some of them have these built up things in their mind that, you know, our existence is disrespectful to them. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, and we're 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 at war, we're we're at odds. Have have trans women used slurs against women? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it a defense mechanism for both sides? Yes. Because the biggest, your, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. One of your biggest obstacles when getting into situations like this, using the term, or or, or saying something like "woman experience," when you mm-hmm. when you saying, you know, because th- you were saying your obstacles have been being black, being a black woman. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you right, right. I didn't even let you get to the third part because we need to really dissect <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, you know. The biggest thing is you're met with you're a man and you're always going to be a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then sometimes our retort could be, well, bitch, I look better than you. Mm-hmm. Which both parties, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, because I think it shows insecurities on both sides. On both sides. Yeah. Trans women and cisgender women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just I don't I just I wanted to make sure we cleared that path away mm-hmm. that you are not trying to take away from you or I, but definitely this is about you. Mm-hmm. You are not because you're using the term black woman experience, mm-hmm. not trying to take away or uh, from a black woman's experience. Right. But this has been one of your obstacles as well, you know? Yeah. So you maneuver through this, you get through this type of situation, and you know, and what's your first, your first time doing what you do, you, you, you like to do? What, what, what was that like? How did Acting? it feel? Yeah. Um, well, I kind of break it up in segments, because I, I started as a thespian. You're a lesbian too? <laughs> no, I, I started God, as a I didn't thespian. know you could be one of those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're th- you're a, you're a thespian. Well, and for the people that don't know what that means, it's just a, a theater. Like you're you're an actor, but theater, a mm. theater actor mm. specifically. Mm-hmm. So I started in high school as theater, and that was amazing because I went to one high school where we didn't have theater, and then I transferred to another one where we had theater, and um, I was able to do theater. So sh- shout out to McClure Senior High School, you know, Drama Club Troop Seven Eighty Seven. Where is that? That's in uh, Ferguson, Florida, in Ferguson, Missouri. So is that where you're originally from? You know, I'm originally from East St. Louis, Illinois, but a lot of people don't really, they hear St. Louis and they just think St. Louis, Missouri. But I have lived in St. Louis and grew up in St. Louis as well. So I just leave it at that. But yeah, I'm from there. You might as well say. Like it when you do it right. There, there right there. there. You know, hard there, chair. You know, all of the R. <laughs> <laughs> so you've adopted all of that. You've, 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 you've. I tried not to, but yeah. Just. When you get, you know how, you know, when you get comfortable in your language and you start speaking in your native tongue, so to speak, that's when it comes What's out. What's your native tongue? Burr. 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 Come on, her. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, when, I, when I'm trying to be cautious, or conscious, whichever one, about it, I'm like, there, chair, mm-hmm. hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exercise. <laughs> oh my God. So it's there, mm-hmm. chair, uh-huh. hair. Period. But in your native tongue, it's the the <laughs> char, char, her. <laughs> <laughs> you should write a cookbook. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, like, if I knew how to cook, you know what's funny though. So I, I went to college and got my degree in hospitality and restaurant administration and cooked and everything, but still don't. I'm not a chef. Even though I didn't go to culinary school, but we still learn how to cook in the kitchen. But I'm still not a chef, so I, I don't think I'd be good at that part. So, yeah, but you, but you're a good actress, though. You, 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 think, could, yeah. could you act like you could. Well, yeah. Okay. Both. Well, right, What's that lady name? What's the movie, Julia? 
Julie and Julia. Yeah, Julie and Julia. Mm-hmm. It was one? about a, a Julia Child. Julia Child. There we go. Yeah, I um, can I, act I, I like Julia it. Child. Yeah. Come on, Julia. Oh, you all. So you take a piece of the casserole. Right, right. Put the casserole into the oven. <laughs> oh, 300 Come on, Madison degrees. Street. Yeah. <laughs> Why is no one ever ready? ready. <laughs> I love that movie. I love that movie. Yeah, it's the best. But yeah, so it started off in theater, went to college, didn't act, just did hosting stuff, which I think adds to your, your craft of acting because that's just a bunch of improv anyway. Oh. And then. Well, um, I feel attacked. No, no, improv, improv is a great tool. Improv is a great tool. Because, like, to, just think about it. You hosting a show, you got to be in front of these people, whether you have some in your hand or not, to imp- like, you mm-hmm. improvise mm-hmm. what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. it's a it's a good thing. You do it amazingly. I, I try to do what I can you do. do you know, they say I don't have any talent or anything, girl, but, you know, well, they say a lot of this and they say a lot of that. They all say some shit. Everybody. Right, you know, but what they mama say about them. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking and, of their uh, mama, oh. <laughs> how is your relationship with your family? Uh, it's, you know, uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's cool. Is it right there or is it right there? I think it's like right her. Right her. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in the middle. No, no I, with, with, I think me and my mom specifically, we um, our relationship has really developed. It took it took a, a while for it to develop to where it is now, and I'm proud of where it develop where it is. I feel like we still got more, you know, growth and things to do, but I'm I'm happy about where it is when as it c- pertains to like my brothers and sisters, um, you know, they're respectful. You know, when I brought my brother goes to school bus and like if I drop him off or some, he say that's my sister or like they tell their friends that's my sister. Um, shockingly, I think the most respectful person of it is my sister. The cis woman. <laughs> oh but I think she's probably like the most respectful person. But I think in general, like I don't have no problems. But I think my family know and I've made it very clear that I am who I am. And ain't nobody going to stop that. So mm. so it's safe to say that you, uh, in all of this situation, on your, on your road to uh, pursuing your dreams mm-hmm. in your, your career, you, you too have experienced... Uh, being kind of like with your family a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. You know, misgendering and saying the wrong things and people being a little um, resistant to the right things to do. Um, But yeah, you know, I think, like I said, I think I've made it very clear that I'm good either way up, either way it goes, with you or without you. And that's more so for the, not the immediate family. Like, you know, you would always want your immediate family to be in your life. But even then, it like, I'm a, I always tell people, and I get this from a, a girl named Jasmine Flowers. Hey, Jasmine. She says relationships are optional. And I add on to that. You don't have to be in a relationship with anybody that's not going to serve you well. And that's just period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that goes for friends and family and all that. Ev- everybody. Everybody. Someone asked me uh, just recently here. They said, T.S. Madison, you are, you, you, you. How is it that you can drop stop drop and roll on a motherfucker Mm -hmm. and act like that they didn't even exist Mm -hmm. and i said to them this is what you have to understand a lot of us trans people have been faced with the hard decision of me Mm -hmm. or you right yeah me or you and when you say something like that, you say it in a space of, I'm talking to my motherfucking family. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to my mama, my daddy, my brothers, my anybody that got the same bloodline running in me. I'm talking to you motherfuckers. Right. It's me or you. And bitch, I will walk away from you today and not look back for me. Right. And it gets that serious. It gets to that point. A lot but of it time. is so when you so when you just said that last statement mm-hmm. that you said, it made me you know fully understand you know that it is because I used to be like trying to figure out or, or trying to understand why Madison is it like why do you why do you f- sometimes feel heartless mm-hmm. or you feel cold towards you know things or how could you just like 
turn your turn your back all the way around. Mm-hmm. And when I was asked that question by a good friend the other night, I said, "Bitch, it is because." I have been faced with the biggest task of leaving the biggest people of my life alone. Right. For the betterment of me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just the way it, it works out. Like, you know, and, and, and you can relate to that. Yeah. For sure. I, when, after I graduated college in 2014, I moved to um, Orlando because I was working with a company, you know, trying to pursue the corporate 500 career really mm-hmm. wasn't for me. I learned... Um, and um, I moved to Orlando and I was by myself. I didn't have no family, no friends, nobody there. So I was out there by myself and it was like literally one of the most liberating, like best liberating experiences I've ever had because it was like, I'm in a like a, this new world by myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about everything else. Like I just have to worry about me in this moment and me surviving and me, you know, doing what I got to do, taking care of myself. And it was, it was just, it was a liberating feeling. Like I can't even explain it. It was, Amazing. You found out in that moment that the that the only person that you really needed, really truly needed, mm-hmm. was God. Period. Because that's the only person that was there with you. I feel you so hard yeah. on that. Yeah. If I don't feel you, no, I feel you so hard mm-hmm. on being faced with. That's all. That's, that's all right. you got. Everybody else could say they with you. Everybody mm-hmm. else could this and the other, but that's truly who all you really got. Right. No, yeah. No shade. That's really all you truly got. And even as a kid, when you're dealing with battles and things around people that don't understand you, who else you got? That's it. That's it. And that's why it's... it's People will never get it. Mm-mm. Sister, we can sit there and talk about this shit until we blew in the face. Right. They'll never get it. And one thing that, in listening to you, talk to me about your journey Mm -hmm. a little bit. I haven't heard you once say, I just wish somebody would help me. I wish this. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard you say that. Meaning, from what I'm gathering Mm -hmm. in in the little bits and pieces of conversation, that you went out to get that shit on your own. Yeah. And it ain't give a fuck who was with you or not. It was about you. Right. Mm. Don't you think yeah. that don't you think that's a bit selfish? <laughs> Self-centered? No. Narcissistic? I think it's selfless when you put yourself first. It, it, I mean, you have to look at it, not you personally, but people just have yeah, to look at it from a different mm-hmm. lens. Cause mm-hmm. you gotta put you first. At, at some point you have to make it about you. Mm-hmm. Cause you only have this experience to make it to, to, to do whatever it is you want to do. You have this experience. So of course you're going to serve and be a servant and you know, whatever else you want to do with the community and what else, but you have to still make it about you. Cause ultimately it's about your happiness. I respect that. I respect that to the 1000th person. <laughs> Come on, first thing. <laughs> I do. I do. How is your, How's your love life? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't I don't have a love life. Why? So okay. Why girl? So this I can is, tell you why I don't got it, but this ain't this is this isn't about me. This is about you. So, okay, so I'm gonna do a little brief story, right? So prior to my because tra- I transitioned uh June will make kind of what, four years? Four years ago? Four years ago? Um, but prior to then, like, I've never, and this, this will make sense, y'all, just, just stay with me. I've never felt like, um, a male that was, I never felt like, how am I say this? I was always attracted to, to males or men, but I never felt like that myself. So for me to be a male presenting identified person dating another male presenting identified person, that wasn't for me. Oh, that okay. wasn't for me. Okay, so I never dated during that time. Oh, okay. So for those of you who are not understanding what she's saying, what she's saying is pre-transition. Um, you didn't identify as a male. Yeah, like, and you didn't want to date another male as a male. Right, right. Because I didn't feel that way. You wanted to have the male experience as a as a woman. 
<laughs> oh, wait. <yes. laughs> you wanted to have the male, the, like the, the experience of like being with another male as a woman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Girl, I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of sort of like when I told my story to people, I was like, mm -hmm. I, I never, when it was like, do you like straight men? Is that? I was like, well, I didn't want a man looking at, attracted to me as a, as a dude. Yeah. Right. It didn't feel right to yeah, me. Like, girl, I don't, like, when he looking at me with a high top fade and mm -hmm. some motherfucking, yeah. you know, some Tommy Hilfiger clothes right. on. You gay? Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> And that's a, a label and to me I never... Can I honestly say you're the first person that has ever I've ever sat with, mm -hmm. communicated with, that has that same... That expressed really? to me that same thought. Mm -hmm. If you go back as early as people have been following me for years, you will hear me say that I did not... In, the, in my early transition, I didn't feel as if I was trapped in the wrong body or whatever. I my I, I have been honest about all my transition mm -hmm. situation that in the beginning for me in the beginning mm -hmm. in the beginning I felt you know I, it was some sexual shit mm -hmm. and I didn't really want a man to like me as a boy mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying because I'm right. like I'm not I'm not you know so, but I, I really started understanding as I started progressing into my transition. So I mm -hmm. understand exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. When you, it's been four years mm -hmm. since you've been in your transition, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to experience being. Am I? Am I stop, correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Okay. And you didn't want to experience being with a, another man as a man. Right. Yeah. Because I never felt that way. I totally understand. It. I never felt that way. Somebody else out there may not yeah. get it. But I totally understand it because that was the way I felt too. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to. Yeah, and, and like, and let me say that to your point too. Like being born in the wrong body. I know, like that's a, a lot of people like to make that a blanket statement for the community. But I look at it in like a to me more like a spiritual sense. Like I was born in the body I was supposed to be in, but my spirit, maybe my soul, is who she's probably always been. Mm. She was just put into this body, <laughs> so now she's. Making the physical match who the spiritual soul ran. Well, well I look at that's it. That's how I've always felt, felt I, and seen it. I, I look at it kind of like a cocoon. Mm hmm. Be a nice cocoon and then you transform it into a butterfly. Poof. <laughs> Come on, butterfly. Come on, caterpillar. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. But, okay, so the, the dating. So that, 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 that's that part. That's why I never dated. Then it was like when I started, when it's like when you transition, it's like a, a whole nother, a new start kind of to life, to dating. Cause now you have to accept so many different things. So I, I be honest, I girl. was a virgin too, up until I was 26. So I didn't even lose my virginity until I transitioned. Cause then I felt more comfortable with who I was and my identity and w with my body. You took that shit serious. Listen, <laughs> girl, you listen. 26 y'all 26 years <laughs> you, you 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 took that shit serious serious yeah but can, can i tell you why i waited though to to, to, to transition tell me because i've always known that it was something i needed to do and how do i i don't i always have my like i have my story but i don't ever want to offend nobody i don't ever want to come out hold on offensive. let me let me let me let me let me just okay. give you a sense of security here okay this is most of one of the most offensive bitches that you can be <laughs> when you came to my platform and you are allowed to tell your story, okay. however it may be, okay. because it's yours. Right. It's true to you. You're not acting. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so when I was when I was younger, the um the first trans woman I had ever seen, like I had I I've always knew, you know, internally like, oh like some yeah, I need to do something different, but I didn't know that it was possible, right? So the first girls I ever seen, I feel like they were, um, they were, you know, escorting, they were mm -hmm. still in fraud and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so what I did, and it wasn't their fault, it was my fault, was I internalized that I needed to do those things to transition. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I know I don't want that to be my story. I didn't want to take that path. And so I was like, well, I can't transition. And like I dealt with that all the way up until I was about 25. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not, and I literally told myself, I was like, I'm not spending another 25 years of my life dealing with what.
what I know I need to do but scared. Because, you know, I was, you know, in dealing with religion, oh, is God going to love me? Am I going to go here and there? And yeah. So I was like, listen, this is what I got to do. I know I don't have to do other things to, to get this. This is not the only way to obtain that and to support that. And so 26, that's when I started. You left some gaps in there for me. Okay, what happened? Let me explain. <laughs> you left a few gaps in there. Okay. You said that your the 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 trans women that you had to look basically I, I'm paraphrasing a mm -hmm. little the trans women that you had to look up to uh for prostitution, pro prostitutes, boosters, <laughs> stunt queens. <laughs> Stunt queens, yeah, and all of the stuff that's a part of our community because what it does is it, it it shows it shows there has to be a beginning, right, right. It has to be an exam. It has to be something. Someone has to see something so they can be like, just like with you, mm -hmm. I ain't, I'm gonna hold off on my transition, right. Am I making sense? No, yeah, you're making sense, for sure. Because now, somebody's going to watch this show, trans girl, young trans girl, whatever, even an older one. Because, mm -hmm. listen, old bitches can get taught new shit, too. Right. Can say... Very true. So, Tony, how do you get into How do you do this? And, uh, so, you didn't... So, I'm taking it that you haven't escorted, you haven't been mm -mm. Uh, you haven't been a, a, a fraud girl mm -mm. you haven't done any of these things mm -mm. so there's a girl that's watching that's gonna say this is this is me yeah how do i do what you did what you gonna tell them <sighs> <laughs> I'm, am i am, is the questions too hard no but I, I feel like for for me um how did i how did i do i just had to make up in my mind essentially because for me transitioning is mental first like yes. it's, it's mental first you have to make up for you and be secure in you to know that this is who you are and can't nothing nobody say mm -hmm. tell you anything different and that's just that so for me because i internalized those things i had to unlearn some things mm -hmm. i had to see some new examples and i had to just get tired of like feeling like that's what I needed to do. No, I don't have to do that. At the end of the day, I don't. And I didn't have to do it. So be you. I, I don't, for me, I don't know what other advice I can give, but just own who you are, accept who you are and be you. And whatever route you need to follow, you know, as far as like med medical 
um, transitioning, you know, get your doctor, do whatever necessary steps you need to take, and then, you know, go ahead with your life. Mm. And, this and it, it was really honestly more simple, simply put, an experience once I experienced it than what I thought it was going to be. Because I thought it was going to be a whole bunch of other stuff that I needed to do and all of this other stuff. Like what? Give me an example. Like I, I thought like, oh girl, I, I got to get these surgeries and that surgeries and how I'm going to pay for these surgeries and that surgeries. Um, Like when I quit my job and I had my insurance and I couldn't be on my moms, like I was depressed and like, oh my God, like, because girl, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still a woman at the end of the day, pill or not, shot or not. T blocker or not. Right. Mustache, beard, whatever growing or not. Like <laughs> there's razors for that, you know, get you a good aftershave. <laughs> get your laser though, girls. Get your laser. <laughs> yeah. But this is because you've 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 made the mental transition. Yes, that was first. And okay. those years may allow me to do that for sure. So so what I what I'm learning is that you have mentally transitioned. Mm -hmm. Before you physically transition, uh, yeah. and your physical transition was not going to take place in a dark space or learning from um, a dark situation, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm, I get it. I get yeah. it, Tony Bryce. I get it. <laughs> I'm learning so much about me from talking to you. Really? Yes. Oh. Because what I'm learning is, I really wish that. And I don't regret it, mm -hmm. but I really right. wish that maybe I would have, maybe I would have had someone. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. I, I maybe that I would have had someone to look at and say, I don't have to be an escort. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. I don't have to boost and fraud. I don't have to do that, mm -hmm. and I don't have to go to black market doctors mm -hmm. in order to get my body done and things like that. Right. I don't have to do that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I ended up with scars, silicone scars. I ended up with um, uh, 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 dis, you know, little mm -hmm. disfigurements on my body because, you know, at all costs, thank you, at all costs, and I don't know if you can relate to this. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be a woman. Yeah, and, no, I get it completely. And uh, <laughs> you go through these changes and stuff like that. And you go, you get these under the table surgeries. And so I, I have to say, I commend you. Thank you. I commend you. And I want to thank you for sitting here telling a young girl, a young person out there, it is okay to wait. Yeah. Because that's what I gather from you. Yeah. It gets weary. <laughs> it can get discouraging. It can get a little depressing along the way. But it's okay. But it's okay. It's okay to wait. Yeah. Get your mind together. Yeah. Look around. Be like, yeah, I respect those girls for what they had to do. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what I wanted to do. Right. And transitioned in. Yeah. That's Stella Rosa right there, girl. Stella Rosa Black. <laughs> I'm scared, y'all. No, like, scared. it ain't this good. Oh, so you don't drink alcohol, girl? Oh, that is. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> oh, that's good. Babe, listen. Chichi, you ain't lie to me. Oh, this is good. This is good. That Stella Rosa is good. This is yeah. good. And I was introduced to Stella that's Rosa good. Black from a, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a person that I enjoy watching on YouTube by the name of Jay Wilson. Okay. He came out to one of my shows mm. in uh, uh, Houston at the... Oh God, the House of Blues in Houston, mm -hmm. and he brought me a uh, bottle of Stella Rosa, mm -hmm. and I didn't open it for a while, and I finally came home and I opened it, and girl, I've been hooked ever since. That's good. Yeah, and you know I'm a Moscato kind of wine drinker because I like sweet stuff. I don't like nothing that tastes like alcohol, and it's good. <laughs> this real good. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> What's called Stella Rosa Black? Stella Rosa Black, bitch. Go ahead, Stella Rosa what a Black. Bottle, Chichi, let us see the bottle, girl. That is good. So, what makes you don't want to drink alcohol, girl? You're not a party girl. No. Uh, I just never, yeah, like, see, I did, like, I've. This is what it looked like Stella Rosa. Stella Rosa Black. 
That is good. They, they sell it in like the Walmarts and Publix and all that? Um, I know we got it from Food Depot. Oh, for, oh well, that's even better. <laughs> she bought she buy $10 a bottle. Okay. You know, that's real. That's good. That's yeah. a reason price for a good taste like that. That's this. good. My God today. My God today. <laughs> I love that saying, by I'm, the way. I'm going to sit this over that here. That is good. Yeah, that's good. Get y'all some of that Stella Rosa black. The black, bitch. Black. Black. Noir. Yeah, noir. <laughs> Can we get French on y'all? Yeah. Noir. Noir. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's oh, so Tony, what are you? What's what's going on in your career right now? Like, what's happening? So right now, um, so I'll be on a show this summer called um, P Valley. <laughs> what's up, P Valley fam? Um, it'll be on Stars. Mm. It's created by a lady named Katori Hall, and she is just she's amazing. She's unapologetically black. <laughs> I love it. Like Amanda Seals. Yeah. Baby, Amanda Seals is unapologetic. Did you black. see when she posted that clip? She's like, wait. When she was like, oh, you and Jeannie been arguing. She was like, wait. I'm going to tell you. you my better first, get her together. My first, experience, my first experience with Amanda Seals is when uh, she and I worked together on a pilot that we were doing for a show mm -hmm. that VH1 was. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff, girl. <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff in my career, like oh. a lot of stuff that I ain't never said you nothing never said about, but now. you know, at, at this point, hey, whatever. But she and I worked together on this show um, called, um, God, it was called uh, Fashion, some fashion, um, some shit it was, some fa some fashion thing, like, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was it was a show that was uh, VH1 was working on or whatever, you know. Uh, eventually, they recreated the show. They gave it to um, what's the girl with the bald head? They got the tattoo, Amber Rose. Oh, Amber Rose. Okay. They, they we piloted the show. Mm -hmm. They gave it to us. Uh, it was called Style Ish. That's what it was called, Style Ish, Ish or okay. something like that. And then they changed the name. Mm -hmm. Then they they gave it they made, gave it the Amber Rose. They took it back. They gave it back to us, mm -hmm. you know. Then they gave it back to Emma Rose because it was me. Uh, uh, a man. It was a me. Amanda. Amanda was had came in and they they was pair, chemistry pairing our chemistry okay. pair, and it was a, a, a Tanisha Thomas. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Bad Girls Club. Bad, okay. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of people that you know that mm -hmm. people be like, well, how how Mass Mass and pay all them people to come be on her show? Like, girl, you don't even know that. Girl, y'all don't the even know. Y'all have no idea of the connections that I that how yeah. like, how I'm connected with people and who I'm connected with. You know, just because I'm not out there screaming and they love to call me a clout chaser, girl. Look, <laughs> just because I'm not out there screaming, girl, you don't know who be on my phone, right? Or who be in my inbox, right? Or who be motherfucking emailing me. Am I right, Legra? Right. Basha! <laughs> you don't know who be on yeah. there emailing me, communicating with me, talking to me, saying, no, you know, bitch, it's like, bitch, you on stars coming up. Yeah. Bitch, don't know who you, who you, who you got in your back pocket. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you're trans, you're never gonna, this is never gonna happen for you, trans. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're prostitute, this is never gonna happen for you. Uh, girl, some people don't pay that shit no attention. Mm -mm. It's a lot of people that don't pay that shit no attention. It's a lot of people that respect yeah, the hustle. They do. They respect the journey. Somebody out here watching gonna respect the fact that you said, which I got, I, I, it added a different level of respect from me to you, mm -hmm. that you said, I'm gonna hold off on my transition because I don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. and that. And that wasn't no shade to them. Right. It was just you mm -hmm. ain't finna take that route. Right. And I'm a whole lot on my transition and I'm gonna get my shit together in my mind. Right. I got so much respect for you for that. Thank you. I do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because I, I think a lot of times when it comes to like telling stories, even in the acting world, I think feel like we go a lot of times they go so much to that that particular narrative, the sex work narrative, which is fine because, like you said, it's very much I mean, a part of our listen, community. It's a part. Of, it was a part of my story too. But it's like I'm like for girls like me, I'm like I don't relate to it. Mm -hmm. So then that leads you to be able to, to have to create for yourself, which is fine. Like be out there and create. All the creators create. If you know, if you don't see yourself represented or your story represented, represent yourself. Right, represent yourself and create it. That's exactly what you God do. And that's, that's something I did for, um, speaking on like the terms of career, I have a film called Best Thing I Never Had, which I'm telling a love story between a black trans woman and a black uh, man, a cis man. So, because you don't... 
Okay, when you say cis man, is he gay identified? Heterosexual identified. Oh. Yeah. Wait a minute now. Hold on. Is this what's going to be on stars? No, 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 no. Oh. This, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I got to hurry up and get my stars right, right. back. Well, you know, if the people listening, y'all want to. Uh... I got to hurry up and get my stars back. That is just my own independent film that I wrote. That's that which we we've casted and um well we should be filming next week next weekend yeah next weekend the six seven eight but um that just that's just an example of me just saying if you don't see yourself or what you want to see created because I you don't see love stories between us and whoever we love you know it's just always the sex work narrative which I say is a part of our community mm-hmm. but like it's so overly saturated let's start giving us other narratives um but speaking of going back to stars so it's called P Valley. The show is um, set like in a Mississippi Delta area, um, like like it was Mississippi Memphis area around that, that area. The um, swamps. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I ain't never been. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a strip club show essentially. It's a strip strip club show. The main character, Uncle Clifford, well, is girl, like I got a, you back in the sex work part. That shit now, but it's uh, good. <laughs> but that's good because she is stripping in the part of well, sex work too. I, girl. My character don't play a strip. I'll say that much. I can't speak too much on you my ain't character. No, you ain't got no clappers, girl. No, girl, you got all that ass right there. You mean to tell me you ain't? I got up. some. I got some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Madison is saying I got some ass. You done learned something today. You done learned something today. <laughs> but no, I, I won't be a stripper. But it, 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 the 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 um, basis, the show is centered around a strip club, and the the things that's going on in the strip club. The the person that owns it is a non gender uh, or gender non gender non conforming person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's which I auditioned for originally back in 2018, and I didn't get it, but. And I'm gonna tell this story, I guess, more in depthly when I have time, like maybe after the show air. But the um, the creator Katori, I went just to do background on the show because I was like, I want to see what the show about and what they doing. And I seen her, and I went up to her, and I said, Hey, Katori, and she turned around, she was like, Hi, I've been thinking about you, and et cetera, et cetera. I got to get you on this show. And the way we we talked, I thought it was gonna be like one of a future season to come. Like this was a Tuesday, Wednesday. Then next Monday, she was emailing me her casting director was emailing me saying, hey, Katori has added this role to this episode. Are you interested and available? And I was like, um, of course. All right, well, let me, uh, let me, let me give you a little bit of story, a little bit of story to coincide with what you, uh. <laughs> what happened? Back in 2013, mm-hmm. um, like when I exploded on the scene, mm-hmm. uh, 2012 is 2013-ish, like that, when I exploded on the scene, um, I was approached by Vice, Mm. HBO Vice or whatever. Mm. And uh, I was actually approached by Janiska Bravo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of Janiska Bravo. Um, Her and Matt Matt Gelman, they were together. They were in a relationship with each other. And like they they really enjoyed that little viral video. Mm -hmm. Yes, the viral video that all of you girls like to, you know, call me trash about. The big wigs was on my telephone about that. New Wig 22 inches, yes! They had written a script for me that was, uh, yes, girl, I'm pouring it because, girl, I, yeah, I, I'm, get your glass so that you can know, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Pour me a little bit of that glass. Uh, 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 what is it? Stella Rose? Stella Rosa Block. Block. Noir. <laughs> so, so what had happened was they had wrote a, a script for me um, uh, to do. And uh, what was the guy? The guy, Steve Urkel was going to be on it. Uh, okay. Malcolm, what is his name? Jamal, the, oh, Steve, or Jim, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, it didn't happen, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, like, uh, I don't know what happened. They went in a whole, like, right right the day we was getting ready to start shooting the thing, it was like, uh, you know, which it was, that that, uh, that, that kind of stuff does happen. Mm-hmm. But maybe because I, I don't know. But years that went by, mm-hmm. right, I get a, I've kept in contact with Janiska and Matt I've emailed, text, communicated. Out the blue, I get old nasty text message. Mm-hmm. T.S. <laughs> what are you doing? I was like, girl, I'm sitting home, you know, you know, you know, chilling, getting ready to do my uh, Queen Supreme Court show, whatever. She's like, girl, um, I got something special for you. Check your email. So the email came mm-hmm. and um, it was a script. And, in the, and the script was... Uh, uh, if it was a, it was a part mm-hmm. in the movie, uh, it was a part of the movie that come, come out Zola. Okay. Um, Zola is a movie about I don't know if you remember that Twitter thing that was going on that went viral. Mm-hmm. It was a stripper thing, 
it, it was real big. Ava DuVernay and all of them were talking about it on Twitter. It was really big back mm -hmm. in 2015 or something like that. Anyway, I end up being casted in Zola, in the Zola movie. Oh, and I went, I filmed, I kept it very hush, 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 mm -hmm. hush, 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 hush about it. Um, I filmed it maybe 2018, mm -hmm. like November of 2018. Okay. I went all through 2019. I know what was going You know how that, you know yes. how that shit worked? Yes. It takes time, y'all. You know how that shit worked? I went all through whatever, you know, we were talking, it was going to be good. Finally, it premiered at the uh, Sundance. Oh, uh, that is my dream. <laughs> Sundance Film Festival. So I guess my little part in the movie was really, mm -hmm. you know, and I can't wait till y'all see it because it is, I know when it's coming out. I, okay. I can't I can't say yet, right. you know, but I know when it's coming out, they're going to give me the promotional stuff mm -hmm. for it. But they saw it at the Sundance Day and like people were, Essence wrote about my little part. They said I okay. had a, yeah, Essence wrote about, they, it was a cameo that I had in it. That was so funny, and then how Janeska kept it true, right. you know, using the internet and the internet people, whatever. But I've rambled on to say all of that to say that one, it takes time, yeah, and two, God will put you in a place mm -hmm. that you don't even expect to be put in. Unexpected, right. I was unexpectedly in these people's radar, right? And then uh, down the line, I didn't get the first thing that came. But the second thing I got, mm -hmm. you know, with this or whatever, which is a part that I know is going to stand out when the world watches it right. very soon. And it's one of those memorable parts that's just, that I'm very proud of, mm -hmm. having a good time, being myself. Right. And I get exactly what you say. I just want to say, for me, your whole thing sitting here resonates so much mm -hmm. with me. It's like p parallel, but different. Yeah. Like you ain't had nothing to do with sex work, none mm -hmm. of that stuff. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> but we've shared these spaces. Right. You get what I'm saying? Which brings me to the ending part of the show. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to be seen. Right. The sex worker, the girl that doesn't do sex work. Mm -hmm. The person that transitioned at 17 the person that transitioned at 26. Mm -hmm. you, you understand right. what I'm saying? I do. Because we both built our own lane for ourselves. Right. Right. And somebody out there watching is going to have the opportunity to digest this conversation, digest both of us, mm -hmm. and be like, that's me. Right. I can do it. You don't feel that? I do. I do, I, and I live for that because I wish I like had things like that. When it's I was, okay. Yeah. Be the, be the dream. Mm -hmm. Be the dream for somebody else. Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. That is so beautifully put. Be the dream for somebody else. Yeah. I ain't never thought about it like you that. You got to think about it like that. You have to. That is so you have beautifully to. put. And, and a lot of times, the things are there are things in your life that you're mm -hmm. gonna go through that ain't even that you're gonna be trying to figure out like why the fuck is all it? It ain't about you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not about you. It's bigger than you. Right. You're, you're just a vessel, girl. I want to give you that piece of advice going on into your life. Like, going on into your journey. Going, you're just a vessel. Right. Girl, you transitioned at 26, bitch. We all start. We all start getting the hormone shots and shit back early when we young. <laughs> <laughs> transition at 26. Mm -hmm. ain't about, it's not about you. Right. It ain't about me. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. But you just got to go and walk the journey. Mm -hmm. You got to go out there and be the dream right. for somebody else. Any last words you want to tell the people? Um. I, so this summer, support <laughs> P Valley mm -hmm. on Stars. Yeah. I don't know when it's coming out. I just know it's this summer. Um. You know, whenever my film is completed, best thing I never had, you know, I hope that people support that because I'm definitely going to try and do um, screenings. And I definitely plan to submit it to Sundance. Like, that's a dream to submit and get accepted. Um, because, like I said, it is a different story. And um, and I also want to shout out um, Actors Link Up. They have a, a place, a, a group called Actors Link Up here. They meet every other Wednesday. And um, it's just, it's in, 
important, like we were talking about, like you were saying earlier, to be seen and for spaces that's majority, majority cis people to have trans representation in those spaces, especially when it's about your career, is dope. Mm. To let the people know that we're here too. And where they, that, where that we can, hold space in this Where can they find this too. stuff? Um, well, Actors, Act, Actors Link Up, you can find them on Instagram at Actors Link Up. Um, they're actually, well, because it's... <laughs> So yeah, y'all can find <laughs> y'all can find Actors Link Up on Instagram every other Thursday. My project isn't on um, the internet yet because we haven't filmed yet. So once we do that, we'll probably start creating Instagram and all the good stuff. And then just P Valley, you can follow. I think it's uh, P Valley Stars on Instagram. You can follow me. Um, Tell me. Oh, you can follow me at uh, the T H E Tony T O N I Bryce B R Y C E on Instagram and uh, Facebook, Twitter. And even on Snapchat, too. So, I, yeah. I want you to start vlogging more, too. You think so? You know, I tried to do that in college. And I think I got kind of discouraged from doing it because I didn't have the, the visuals that I wanted and that I wanted it to look like. So I was like, don't put you. Sometimes we put too much in what's unnecessary. That's true. Girl, pick your phone up, girl. That's and tell true. those people. Girl, be the dream. <laughs> be the dream, girl. Yeah. Right. It ain't say you had to have glamorous hair to be the dream. <laughs> it ain't say you had to be motherfucking whooped up to be the dream. It ain't right. say that. Just be the dream. Yeah. That's true. I want you to stop vlogging more. I want you to stop being more visible than just, you know, little things. I want you to be more mm -hmm. visible. And that's, see, that's the universe and God telling me that too. Because I, a lot of times I think I let my transition get in my way and make me not want to be out and about like I just come out for the community stuff, the Kiki ball, shout out to the Atlanta Kiki scene. Um the um whatever I'm booked to film for, if I'm going to a show and then that's it. Like I don't really get out and network and stuff. So that's why places like an actors link up for me is like a, 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 a opening door for me to get out there and really do more. So cause I, I feel like that has been a consistent message to me for twenty twenty is to be more visible, mm -hmm. get out there, network, socialize with people. Because yeah. Digest it, girl. To. I have to. Digest it. I have to, y'all. Wait for me. Because <laughs> I'm such a Scorpio. I'm, so, I'm a Scorpio. We like our peace and quiet. But in this industry, you have to be... Loud, loud, loud. I was going to say, loud, loud, and color. Yes, like, you, you have to be. You have to be, so. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better this year. Listen here, Fish Patty. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I want you to leave this house knowing that I love you, you and I'm proud of you and I wish the best for your career. And listen, I'm going to do a follow up on you. I'm mm -hmm. going to do a follow up on all my spotlight people, but Thank I'm going to do a follow up on you, see what's going on honey, mm -hmm. when the movie drop or whatever. Okay. And I wish you the best. Thank and you. listen, be the dream, bitch. Be the dream. Be the dream. Hug my neck, girl. Hug my oh. neck. Oh my God. I love you so much. Thank you. Love you too. And, and just lastly, before we end, I just want to thank you for having this platform for people like me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, girl. Thank honey. you so much. Oh, girl. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. to the TS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl. Let me be careful before they say, I'm over here getting my ego strong. Oh, God damn Lord. It. All right, listen. Oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a spotlight session with none other than me, the TS Madison, honey, and the lady, Miss Joni Price. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with Tony Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tony Bryce. You can follow her on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat. Yes. And YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. You might see my reel on there. But yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. Yes. That wine you. got me feeling it. That, what, <laughs> what is it? Stella Rosa Stella Block. Stella Rosa Block. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all. We'll see y'all in the week. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.